All right then, gang. So in this video, we're going to create our very first React component. Now, I've already said that React components are the lifeblood of React, and we use them to take control of different things or different elements inside our website, such as the nav bar, search bar, a contact form, those kind of things. In this video, we'll create a React component to take control of this thing right here, this div with an ID of app. So we need to create that component in JavaScript. So first of all, let's do our script tags. Now, how do we create a React component? Well, there's a few different ways. In this video, we're gonna use JavaScript classes, a class-based component, but I will show you other ways as we go forward through the course as well. So to create a class-based component, first of all, we need the class keyword. And by the way, if you wanna learn more about JavaScript classes, I've got an object-oriented JavaScript tutorial series right on this channel. I'm gonna leave that link down below. But essentially, classes are a way for us to blueprint objects in JavaScript. But anyway, we're gonna create this class and give it a name called app. You can call this whatever you want. I'm calling it app since we're gonna use it to control this app ID right here. And this class is gonna extends react.component. So we have access to this React object right here because we added this script to React and we're using this thing on the React object component to inherit all the base functionality of a component into this class. So now this class right here is gonna represent our component. Now class-based components must have inside at least one function and that function is called render. So the render method right there, that is what is responsible for rendering our template to whatever element we want to render to. So what we're gonna do inside this method is return a value. And this value is gonna be our JSX template. Now typically, this return value is gonna go inside parenthesis because a lot of the time, our return value is gonna go over one line. All right then, so remember JSX is a way for us to write HTML code inside JavaScript because that's what we're doing here. We're inside a JavaScript block. So we wanna write some HTML code here. So we'll use JSX to do that. And it looks very much like HTML. So let's create our JSX template. We'll create a div first of all, and then inside that div, we'll just do an H1. So in there, H1, and we'll just say, hey, ninjas. All right, so. That there is our JSX template, and it looks identical to HTML at the minute. Now, there's a couple of limitations when using JSX that you should be aware of. The first one is that we should always generally return one root element at the top, so div, div, like so. We can nest as many elements inside that root element, but there should generally always be one root element at the top. Now, if we did something like this at the moment, and did three root elements, this is not gonna work, right? Because there's three root elements. We need to have just one root element. There are ways around this, but I'm not gonna delve into those right now. So the other limitation is that we can't use the keyword class to add a CSS class to this. Class in JavaScript is a reserved keyword. We use it to create classes. So we have to instead say class name equals to whatever. So I'll call this app-content. So there's a couple of limitations that you should remember when working with JSX. One root element, and we use class name instead of class for CSS classes. All right then, so we have our component right here, but at the minute it's not really doing anything. We want to render this component to this thing right here, and nothing inside this JavaScript is saying to React, do that yet. Now remember, we added this second script up here called React. DOM. This is the glue layer that takes our components and can render them to the DOM. So the way we take this component right now and render it to the DOM is by saying react DOM. We get access to that from here and we use a method called render and inside we pass in two parameters. The first parameter is which class or which component we want to render to the DOM. We want to render this one right here but we don't just say app like so, we add it as a tag, a bit like JSX. So we take the component name and put it inside a tag, which is self-closing. 
The second parameter is going to be where we want to render it to the DOM. So we want to render it right here. So we can say document dot get element by ID and then pass in app. And that's going to tell React DOM to render app this component to this thing right here. So let's give this a whirl. And I'm going to right click over here and go to open with live server. Now I can do that because I've got a package installed called live server. So if you want to do the same thing, you can install that. And that means that on any um, HTML page like this, you can right click and go to open with live server. That's going to open it in a browser for you. Well, it should do anyway. Open with live server. Okay. So at the minute we can see nothing is in here. It's not taking this and it's not rendering it to the DOM. And we should actually see an error in the console if we open this up. And it says syntax error, unexpected token, angle bracket. And that's referring to this JSX right here. So it's not recognizing this stuff, the JSX. And that's because JSX out of the box is not supported in browsers. So we need a way to take this code and transpile it into something that is supported in browsers. Now that is not complex to do at all. We just have to use a tool called Babel. So go to babeljs.io, then go to setup, then go to in the browser, and we're gonna grab this thing right here, this script tag. So Babel is gonna transpile our code right here into something that a browser does understand. And we need to do one more thing, we need to grab this stuff. You see where we have a script tag, we have to say type equals text forward slash Babel. I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see that. And I'm gonna grab that stuff and paste it over here. So this should, fingers crossed, now work. So if we go over to the browser now, we should see Hey Ninjas rendered to the DOM. And if we inspect this element, then we can see that right here inside the div with an ID of app we're rendering our component. So it doesn't get rid of the root div right here. It doesn't get rid of this. It just nests our component inside that div. Make sense? Okay, so this is all well and good, but what is the point? I mean, at the end of the day, I could have just grabbed this and just pasted it inside here, hard coded that, right? Instead of creating this component, then rendering it to the DOM. Now, the idea of React is that we can actually output dynamic content. If it was just always static content like this, it would be useless. But we can output dynamic content inside our components. Now, how do we do that? First of all, let's do another tag, not all that stuff, a P tag. And inside the P tag, what we'll do is a couple of curly braces like this. So this means that we can output dynamic JavaScript content inside these curly braces. So if I wanted to now, I could do a bit of JavaScript, like take the math object and say math.random. This is just basic JavaScript. Then I'm gonna multiply that by 10. So I want a random number, which gets me a random number between zero and one, like 0.764 or whatever. And I'm gonna times that by 10. And then I'm outputting this dynamically to the template. I couldn't just do this without the curly braces because that would just render this as a string. And you'll see that if I save it, view that in a browser, we just get this back. But if I output this inside curly braces, then we're saying, hey, this is actually JavaScript uh, dynamic stuff we want to run here, and I want you to render the result of this to the DOM. So if I save this now, then we should see that random number on the screen. Let me just zoom in, you see that? So I can refresh and get a different number each time, because at the end of the day, this is just rerunning every time we run the file, okay? So that's the power of React components. And it's not always going to be random numbers like this. Again, that would be useless, but it could be data from a database or UI state. Is something open or is something closed? And we're going to see all that as we get further into the course. But for now, that, my friends, is how to create a basic component in React.